Okay, so this video is going to be a bit controversial. It's a video that I've wanted to record for a very, very long time. And if you've heard any of my Twitter rants about why tags suck and why you shouldn't be tagging for segmentation and this and that, I haven't really gone much further in explaining why I hold this position. Now, this position is contrary to the way that most email marketing providers educate their customers about segmentation. This, my position is contrary to the way that most people who teach building lists and growing an audience and so on, it's contrary to the way that they tell their customers to segment their list. And I know it probably sounds weird to be this passionate about uh, how you segment an audience. I mean, there are probably much more important causes to champion However, I've seen firsthand how using tags in an incorrect way directly affects the ability to maintain and to grow an email list. So if you want to have a really solid set of segmentation in place where you're able to send really relevant emails and you don't have issues with segmentation, what I'm going to be covering in this video is needs to effectively be in place in order to not run into these issues that so many people after they get knee deep into email marketing run into. So that's why I decided to record this video. I tweeted and I asked, should I record this video? 90% of you said yes. So I decided, you know what, I'm gonna just hole up in my office, flip on the lights and do this because I'm, I'm big about this. I'm passionate about segmentation and I think most of us are segmenting wrong. So my goal with this video is to really do two things. First off, to explain why the way that you're probably segmenting in your email marketing app is incorrect. And then I'm gonna prescribe a better way of doing it. Now, I don't have beef with tags in general. There are legitimate uses for tagging, which I'll explain. But I think the general idea of we have you know people on our newsletter or we have people who are customers or whatever else, so we're using tags to denote, to, to store that information in a subscriber's record or contact record. And then we're using that to determine what communication somebody should get or how we personalize an email. I think that model of using tags is almost always incorrect. So again, that's what I'm gonna to try to explain to you over the next few minutes. So any good argument I think needs to start with the kind of the first principles. And that is why do we segment? So we segment because like I just said, we want to send better communication and we need some way of determining who's in what segment. And the way that most people do this is by writing a tag. So again, customer newsletter, bought this product, went to this webinar, all that stuff tends to get stored as tags, which again, I don't necessarily have a problem with that, which I'll explain again in, in a few minutes why I think that's a lot of those examples I just gave are perfectly valid. Where we get into murky waters is when we start thinking in terms of proper one of many segmentation. So for instance, Pat Flynn, whenever you join his email list, he sends you an email survey. And this survey has three options. It's basically asking you, what stage is your business? Are you just getting started? Are you less than 500 a month? Or are you making more than $500 a month with your online business? So he, has this email go out as part of his onboarding and people click links in that and these links when clicked will apply a tag like starting out or less than 500 or greater than 500. And this is becoming a more popular pattern because people want to send better communication. So somebody who's just starting out wants to get emails about how can I start a business? Whereas somebody who's already doing fairly well, they want to get emails about how do I grow this thing I already have? So we all have this desire, Any, anyone who's been doing any sort of email marketing for a while, we have this desire to dis distance ourselves from one size fits all and to start sending more relevant communication. And again, the way that this is typically done is through like a, a trigger link or a link trigger where you click that link, it applies a tag, or maybe you have a survey on your site, they fill out an answer and it applies a tag for that answer. And a lot of us are doing this and here's, the issue. Here's my beef with doing this. Let's say that I get Pat's email and I click the first option, which is I'm looking to start a business. 
And then I'm like, oh, well, actually I want this other one. Maybe, maybe I misclicked. I'm gonna click the other one now. Now there are two tags on my contact record. One of them is saying I'm looking to start a business and the other one is saying I'm looking to scale a business. My question is, well, which one is it? If we wanna send better communication, how do we know which group this person is in? And unfortunately, the way that tags work is if you wanted to do this right, what you would need to do is you would need to have rules in place in your email marketing software that say, when somebody chooses option C, we'll call it the scale one, we need to go through and remove tag A and tag B if they exist. Likewise, if they choose option B, remove tag A and remove tag C and so on and so forth. Most people aren't doing that. So what you end up finding is that a lot of email marketing databases, when you really look inside, they have bad data where what you really want is you want, which one are you? One of many, are you A, B or C? And you end up finding that because you're using, you know, self-selection through link triggers, or you just have other maybe backend ways, behavioral ways of putting people into these segments. What do you do when somebody has when somebody belongs to two different conflicting groups, right? And what, generally speaking, when most of us want to do segmentation again, we want one of many, which one are you? I wanna send you this sequence if you belong to that group, this sequence if you belong to that group. It's really difficult when you're using tags as the data layer. It's a bit like imagine a spreadsheet. So imagine, you, imagine that every subscriber in your email database is a row in a spreadsheet. Now, if you were to translate these tags into spreadsheet columns, what you would have would be something like, uh, imagine that example I just uh, gave of starting, growing, and scaling. You would have something like, is starting, true, false. Is growing, true, false. Is scaling, true, false. Anyone who does any sort of intense spreadsheeting, if that's a thing, you wouldn't do that. You would, you would have a column that says something like business stage, and you would have three options, starting, growing, or scaling. Why aren't we doing that when we store data in people's contact records, especially because we can do that. We can do that because every email service provider that includes tagging also includes custom fields. Custom fields are typically seen by most people as custom, my name, or the city I live in, or my age, or something like that, that isn't really segmentation. Instead, it's something that we get injected into emails we send. So, hello, first name, or you are currently age, or something like that. But these custom fields can be used to segment people, and they're really efficient, because if a custom field gets changed, if you go from growing to scaling, guess what? You don't need to clean up the other, you know, that growing data that's no longer relevant. And you never need to worry about them having both options because there's only one option available per field. And custom fields, when used correctly, are an exceptional way to track one of many segmentation. So what industry are you in? Or what's your job role? Or why are you here? What do you need help with? or you know something like that, or even refer, or affiliate, or something like that, right? All of that is great, because you don't want somebody to have two refers. You want an original refer. You don't want somebody to have two affiliates. You, have, you want to have one affiliate tied to every contact record if they came through an affiliate, right? When you're using tags, it just gets super hard to be able to create this cleanness, this consistency, and you end up, again, with bad data. And what do you do when you have, let's say you want to personalize an email, and you have, if, tagged uh, A, show this text. If tag B, show this text. If tag C, show that text. You, as the person writing that email, need to figure out the prioritization. You need to think, does A always trump B and does B always trump C? Because if you do if else, if else with say liquid templating, you're gonna need to make these decisions and it might be wrong. Whereas again, if you can use a custom field that is always going to reflect what they are and never runs the risk of bad data, then you never need to worry about that. You can actually use a switch statement in Liquid. You can say, 
you know, switch off this field. And if they're in retail, show that. If they're in finance, show that. If they're a nonprofit, show that. It makes it super easy, super clean. Okay, so when do I think tagging then makes sense? I think tagging has two uses. The first is select many or many of many. And that would be something like the difference or the distinction between what food do you like and what is your favorite food? So what food do you like might be pizza and ice cream and steak or something like that. And I like all of those. So I would want them all applied to me. Whereas what's your favorite food? That's a, that's a very different thing. And that's where I would again use a custom field to segment them. And I'd call that custom field favorite food or something like that. And then it's either pizza or ice cream or steak or what other the other options. The issue though with many, you know, it's great that we, we want to give people the flexibility of maybe self-segmenting themselves into multiple uh, um, sibling groupings, if that makes sense, right? Like, so different segments that are all kind of siblings of each other, like favorite foods. The problem is using that. So it's, it's one thing to be able to say with your templating, say liquid templating, to be able to say, if they like pizza, show the picture of the pizza. If they like ice cream, show the picture of the ice cream and so on. But how would you use it if they have pizza, ice cream, and steak all applied? I mean, that gets really tricky, right? Like how would you actually practically use that data to personalize email content or to send people down different paths? Let's say you want to um, put, enroll everyone on a sequence, if, you know, depending on their favorite food type. Well, if I like pizza, steak, and ice cream, I might be getting all three sequences simultaneously, which is overload. The better approach would probably be to say, what's your favorite food? Or what's, what's your need? I'm looking to lose weight. Oh, I want to gain strength. Oh, I want to um, compete in a triathlon or, or whatever else. They choose one and then you, you put them down a sequence that targets that need. So more often than not, very few of us, I think, want to actually do select many. But when you're giving people tags as that underlying way of, of tracking that data, you're effectively always doing select many. Because unless you have a cleanup routine where you're saying, if this tag gets added, clean up these other sibling tags, then you run the risk of having, again, multiple people in multiple sibling segments. So that's the first legitimate, I think, use of tags, which is select many of many options. Now, the second use of tags is binary uses. So this is true or false, yes or no, attended this webinar, yes or no read this article, yes or no, click this link, yes or no. But often this kind of binary segmentation gets applied to things like customer. Customer, true or false. On newsletter, true or false. Now I wanna stop you here because you probably think, yeah, you know, I mean, customer, that's, that's a very valid way to use a tag, right? They're either a customer or they're not a customer. But imagine you run a software company. Do you really just have customers or non-customers? Or do you instead have customers who are trialing or potential customers who are trialing, customers who are actively paying you monthly, customers whose credit cards are failing and you're waiting to kind of maybe lock their account while you try to get them to pay you, or maybe people have canceled, so those who've churned. So really, customer, which seems like a binary true-false thing, could actually be a field called customer status. And that field could have trialing, and when they're done trialing, you update that field to say active. And when now they've their credit card fails, you update it to say, you know, dunning or failed or something like that. And then if they do cancel, you update that field to say canceled. Now you don't need to worry about like, what if they had a tag? What if you were doing it all with tags and they have a customer tag and they have an active tag, but they also have a churned tag? Well, which, which is it? What if, did they... Maybe they did churn, but what if they came back and signed up again? If you didn't clean up that churn tag, well, maybe you're still sending them emails thinking, hey, come back, we miss you, right? So if you have a field, all of that gets solved. Likewise for newsletter. I mean, we think of newsletter as being, you're either on our list and you're getting our newsletter or you're not. But what if you wanna add some gradation? What if you wanna be able to say, you can be on our weekly newsletter or our monthly newsletter, or you're not on it at all, right? So you could, you could use a field called newsletter status and you could store in that daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, or you know whatever else. And that way you are able to really get away from that issue we just talked about. What if they have the tag 
monthly and weekly for you know your newsletter segmentation. Well, which one are they? Are you gonna send them your weekly emails or your monthly emails? They have both, how do you know? That's why fields, custom fields, are the almost always the better way of segmentation. Where I would use, again, tags would be things like attended a webinar or read this article, because you there's no gray area there. I mean, yeah, you could go and say they read, they made it to 50% down the article or something like that, but no one does that. I use tags to track truly binary things like clicked a link, attended a webinar, registered for that webinar. And you know, actually, now that I think about it, now that I say that, I actually want to fix that because webinar, right? You, you, you register and then you attend or you don't attend, or then maybe you stay till the end. Could these be custom fields? Could you have a webinar status field that says something like, you know, when they register, you set that to registered. When they attend, you update that to attended. When they still stay to the end, you update that again to be, you know, stay till the end. That's a much cleaner way of handling the different stages that somebody goes through in relation to a webinar that you host. So again, my goal is not to make you think I'm doing it all wrong. I need to go through and fix everything. I just want to make a case and I hopefully I've made this case for why I think tagging is not always the best form of segmentation, especially if you're trying to get segmentation that you can then personalize from. So I'm involved in a company called Write Message. When we do our segmentation that syncs data up to people's email service providers, we do it as custom fields. I have so many people who are like, why can't I write tags? And my response has always been what I just talked about in this in the last few minutes in this video. So I'm hoping though that this can kind of hope, possibly rewire the way that you think about how you're gonna segment your list in the future. Maybe you can go through and, and modify and refactor some of the segmentation you already have in place. It's by no means something you need to do overnight or that's urgent, but I just caution you because again, you can get bad data if you're using tagging and it you end up sending a lot of mixed messages to your subscribers, which if you want to be truly effective as an email marketer, you want clarity, you want focus, you don't want confusion. So hopefully this has helped. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe below. I'm gonna be creating a lot more of this. Uh, this is again, just the start. And I'd love to hear in the comments below also, uh, what do you think? Do you think this is what I just said was valid? Is this something that you're gonna actually start to apply and maybe change the way you segment? Or do you think, you know, team tags, I love tagging. Tagging should always be used for everything. Custom fields are for, you know, petty things like first names and ages and stuff like that. Uh, regardless of what you think, I'd love to just hear in the comments and discuss with you. Um, again, we're all in this to hopefully have better email marketing databases that are more scalable and more um, complete, I think in the sense of, you know, not, not liable to error. So hopefully this video again has helped you um, at least get the, get the right wheels turning and, uh, and I'll see you next time.